Alright guys, just letting you know that this video contains some depictions of nicotine addiction, mental illness, and some sexual themes. Additionally, this video only covers the first five chapters of Yanni Neko, and I recommend you read them before watching. However, there are a lot more chapters, they just aren't translated in English. If anyone knows where I can read the rest of the series that is translated into English, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. Okay, um, Future Peep here. The app that I'm reading this manga on has gifted me with three additional chapters. So we have eight chapters in total, but they're very short and they don't add a lot to my analysis of the series in this video, but they're still worth looking into and yeah, you have eight chapters now to read. So go for it, have fun, go read it. Conflict is something that has to exist in every story in order for it to be interesting. Oh shit, these guys are gonna eat us. Well shit, I have to let these guys eat me. It's conflict. It's just so fucked up, I can't look away. And just like that, I'm hooked. You got me. I'm your bitch, and you could just take me wherever you want, to whatever wacky places you want to take me in that story, and I will be having the time of my life the whole way. Most of the stories that I enjoy tend to have conflict like this, but every once in a while, I find a story that is more slice of life, a story that is relatable and down to earth while also portraying a conflict that is fucked up enough that I just can't look away. Today I found such a story, Yanni Neko, a quirked up slice of life manga where one cat girl's conflict is her crippling nicotine addiction. I'd describe Yanni Neko as a psychological slice of life story with some dark comedy elements. It portrays short glimpses into the life of Yanni Neko, our nicotine and cigarette addicted cat girl. She works in construction sometimes and <laughs> makes payments to her perverted landlord for an apartment and those are about the only things going for her. Besides this, she is a certified rot maxer who is constantly fiending for cigarettes and it's pretty much her whole personality. As a manga, Yanni Neko is a solid, typical quality that you would expect from any sort of manga, it just looks good. The art style, however, varies from moment to moment. Sometimes it's simple and kind of dumb looking, with thick, shittily drawn lines, and I really like this look. And sometimes it's just got some uh, complex compositions, with many of these panels actually having a considerable amount of detail, which are amazing to look at. I would say that the author, Nyan Nyan Factory, uses their style and modular level of detail to show the reader what is most important in a given scene. A lot of manga is like this, and this isn't unique at all to Yanni Neko, but the duality in the artwork is used brilliantly with the duality of the tone of the story. I consider Yanni Neko to be a dark comedy because Yanni has an incredibly silly personality despite the dark nature of her life situation and the various scenarios that we see her in. Yanni is an aloof dumbass, usually reacting to everything in a facetious manner, even if she really shouldn't. Let me tell you about chapter 2 so you get what I'm getting at. So chapter 2, which is called Milligram 2 by the way, all the chapters are labeled as milligrams, it's, it's cute, I like it. Uh, anyways, it opens with Yanni calling her sister. It's not stated exactly why she's making this call, but based on the ending of chapter 1, we know Yanni has not very much money left, and she is fiending for more cigarettes, so it can be implied that she is calling her sister to beg for cigarette money. Anyways, Yanni invites her sister over to her house, but is immediately rejected by her, saying, Eh? No, because... Your room will definitely smell like cigarettes. Your floor is black with ashes anyway, right? Yanni's room is in fact a mess. Ashes stain the floor and walls. Trash is present across the entire living space. It is absolutely filthy. She brushes some trash away from her and tries taking a picture of the room, but 
Her hand starts shaking. Yanni gets up off the phone and starts thinking about everything she needs to do to resolve her situation and clean her room. This backfires horribly and causes her to spiral into a panic, vomiting from the stress. Fucked up and sick on the floor, laying down next to the puddle of her vomit, she laughs, saying, <laughs> um, pa painful, Nya. Nya, <laughs> why, why am I so unhappy, Nya? After this, Yanni decides she needs a cigarette to feel better and desperately scrounges up smokable scraps of smoked cigarettes to make a new shitty cigarette that she's able to smoke. As she lights it up, Yanni starts singing about how happy she is and makes a shit emoji out of the used cigarettes. She picks up her phone, takes a picture of it, and then sends it to her sister. This early moment, while portrayed in a lighthearted and comedic manner, is clearly kind of sad, and it's bleak to witness, and that's just, that's good conflict. I really like how it shows the audience how nicotine completely dominates this cat girl's life, how it is so significant to her, it is everything she can think of, and it has turned her into a pathetic addict that is barely able to function, let alone take care of herself. Thinking a little bit more about it, we can clearly see that Yanni's quality of life is absolute dog shit because of these cigarettes, and yet she views them as a source of comfort, unable to recognize that it just makes her life worse, harming her health and straining her personal relationships. The whole manga, from what I've been able to read, has been like this, and it's amazing to read. There will often be dark comedy mixed in with gross and sad situations, leading to chapters feeling unpredictable and shocking at times. Some key moments from what I've been able to read have been, uh, let's see, Yanni only being able to maintain her lazy, shitty lifestyle because her landlord jerks off to the thought of her, uh, Yanni celebrating her birthday with a cigarette cake, and Yanni having a dream where her doctor tells her that she's going to die of lung cancer, and then hits her in the face for trying to smoke right after. Not because she's smoking with terminal lung cancer, but because she is in a hospital. Do you see what I mean? These situations are absurd and kind of repulsive, but there's also humor here, like the manga is making fun of her debilitating conflict, selling how pathetic she is. It makes me feel dirty reading it, like I'm looking at something I'm not supposed to and laughing at it. I think the author is brilliant for what they were able to accomplish here in conveying this feeling. Overall, Yanni Neko is a banger of a series, and I recommend checking it out if you're a bit of a weirdo freak like I am. For having such an unserious looking art style, this is such a dark premise because it's real. People in real life really do struggle with this, and it's fucking awful. I wouldn't be surprised if the author has experience with addiction due to how raw its portrayal is in this story. I also greatly appreciate how Yanni Neko has chosen to portray such a dark struggle burdening a cat girl, an archetype of character that is usually there for fun and entertainment in stories. There are only a few characters that are cat girls that I'm aware of that have real shit, real problems to deal with in their stories, and so as a cat girl myself, Yanni Neko helps me to feel seen in that regard. I definitely want to read or experience more stories where cat girls are humanized and have real problems, and so if you know any stories that scratch that itch, please recommend them to me. I would love to know in the comments. Just, yeah, definitely share those with me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on Yanni Neko. I think Nyan Nyan Factory has something fun but deep to read here, and it's definitely worth your time. Even if all the chapters aren't out, it is a memorable manga to read for sure. And with that, I will head out and see you guys in the next one. Bye, Nya!